Hey there friends, it's Missy again. Thanks so much for stopping in today. I'm back with a new layout for Hip Kit Club for Mixed Media Monday and I'm using the 2020 July kits. And I wanted to focus on some of the Simple Stories products that we get this month. I love these puffy stickers. There are matching chipboard stickers as well as some washi tape and also some patterned papers, but I really loved the washi tapes. I got these three rolls and I love the mix of patterns and colors. So that's where my layout is gonna start. And when I saw all of these Simple Stories products, I believe this is the Kate and Ash collection. There's a lot of black in there. And so I knew right away that I wanted to make a layout that wasn't, wasn't a summer layout because there are a lot of goodies in the kits this month that just scream summer. My first two layouts with the July kits have been very summer heavy. So I wanted to kind of just go the opposite direction. I'm going to use a black and white picture and just kind of incorporate lots of pink and black and yellow and all the colors that you see here in these tapes. So I'm going to cut each little section out here and punch one big heart out of each pattern and go from there. I I think this color scheme is really cute. I think it's going to work well once I get everything else working with it, but I think those three patterns together look really cute. Um, I thought that I would add a little bit more interest with the hearts. Instead of punching a second heart, I would create sort of a, a heart outline. So I just trimmed around the edges of each place where I punched, and so now I have, basically I'll have six hearts three full solid hearts and then three open hearts. And I'm gonna arrange these on a paper some way, somehow. I pulled out some other things that I thought I might use other than the Simple Stories collection. Uh, I've pulled out some of the exclusive die cuts. I really like these black and white flowers. I'm gonna trim off the white border. I pulled out some of the Maggie Holmes sticker sheets and some of the Dear Lizzie sticker sheets and just kind of played around and kind of decided what theme I wanted to go with. I'm going to use this paper as my background. It's a very soft minty color and there's my picture. I love this picture. It's my older daughter and she's at the dentist and there's a lot going on in the background and so this worked out just just perfect. Um, this is a cut file. One of the exclusive cut files for this month and there's one that says oh boy and there's one that says oh girl and I printed it well I printed it I uh, cut it twice on white cardstock because I had an idea going uh, that I would do maybe sort of a layer kind of an offset layer with the title so it looked it would look like it has a shadow and yeah I'm just gonna play around with the placement of everything and see how it's gonna work I'm gonna have the photo kind of in the middle there. I want the title to be Oh Girl and it's going to overlap the corners of the picture because if you look at the picture over her shoulder on the upper left corner there's a person and then there's all the open space on the bottom right by her knee. So it's got the perfect areas to kind of overlap something. So I'm going to fade out a lot of the area on this pattern paper that I want to add mixed media to. So I'm going to just scrape down some white gesso here. And the brush I'm using, I get a lot of questions about it. It is a silicone brush. It's two inch silicone brush. You can get these on Amazon. And it's just it got a smooth edge. It doesn't have actual bristles on it. So I thought that I would also incorporate the stencil that we get this month and some of the Nouveau paste. This is the mint color. And this background is going to change, which has basically been my life story in my most recent layouts. My backgrounds have been struggle to make for whatever reason, but I learn from them and I use them as, oh, there's Paige coming in for a kiss. I, I use them as stepping points to just keep building on the background, even though my initial idea may not turn out. Uh, what happens here is I like how this looks but the mint color from the paste was just a little bit darker than I wanted because the mint color in the Simple Stories collection is is a lot lighter. So um, I, I was gonna basically go over it again with white gesso to soften up the color but I could not line up the stencil because all those little circles are unique and different. So I just said okay let's just go over it as best you can with some white gesso here. And yeah, that looks terrible. 
So what do I do? I do it down at the bottom. Don't like how this is looking. It's just, it's just too dark for this particular layout. So what I decide to do is just kind of scrape it around and I'm going to ruin all the circles. I'm going to add water and just start scraping. And I'm going to wind up dismantling all those circles. But no, no fear, I'm going to wind up adding more circles later. Um, and I was worried about this background because this is not cardstock. This is flimsy pattern paper that is just meant to be cut and glued. It's not really meant for all this water and all this paste that I am adding to it. Thank goodness for gesso because the gesso is going to be the savior here. So I'm just trying to lighten up the color here. Let's dab some up with this paper towel roll and look at this hot mess. I honestly did come this close to chunking this background and just going with white, but I thought, no, I use white so much and I do like using pattern paper as a background, but this just sort of turned into a messy mess disaster. So then I just grab a napkin and I just start to scrape and smudge, scrape and smudge and lighten it up. And, and it winds up looking better, I think, once I do this because I keep kind of wiping it off is basically what I'm doing here. Um, yeah. Let's just move on. Let's move on. Thank goodness that's over. So here's what I decide to do. This is where I turn into uh, Rachel Ray. And I hate to cook. I'm going to add a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a dash of this, mix it together, <laughs> and hope it tastes good, basically. So that's white gesso. No, it's not. It's modeling paste. No, is it gesso? It's gesso. Oh, I can't even remember, you guys. I've been making so many crazy backgrounds later, lately, I can't even keep track of my materials. What is happening to my brain? Anyway, I'm mixing it. I'm trying to make the paste lighter to match the background, to match the color that's in that heart. So then I decide, uh, let's add a little squirt of white acrylic paint. Yeah, this is the most hodgepodge recipe ever. I just keep mixing it together. It winds up being the perfect color. It winds up working great. So I'm not worried about the end result, but just watching me do this is painful enough. When I was actually making this, I thought, oh my gosh, people are going to not want to watch this video because this is terrible. But uh, it works out in the end. I, I After I put the initial paste down and realized it was too dark, I knew that I wanted to do it again, but just in a lighter color. So the modeling no it's not modeling paste it you know what it is modeling paste oh gosh i gotta get it together get it together modeling paste mixed with the paint and the paste it's it's exactly the same color as the background so i wanted it to be subtle so in the end you can see the circles they just don't stand out as much because i felt like i wasn't going to use anything else that was the darker mint color Everything was the lighter mint color. So here I finally got it like I wanted. Even though some of the circles got a little smushed, it's okay because this is what I would call tone on tone. Now we've got it pretty much like I wanted it. The circles are there. They are very rough and bumpy. You can see them, but they're subtle. They're not so dark that they jump right off the page in your face. Okay, now we're going to get crazy with this glitter paper. If you got the cardstock kit this month, then you've you got this beautiful shimmery glitter paper. And I'm going to use it as a layer behind the photo there. And it's very thick. There's no way I would try to run this through my cameo because I know that it would um, probably explode my luck. I have terrible luck sometimes with my cameo. So I thought we're just going to use this as a background layer. And here I am trying to change the color of it just a little bit around the edges. I'm using uh, a couple ink pads from previous kits, a pink one and a red one, just to kind of change the tone of the pink. And then I'm going to change the color of one of the layers of the title. So I'm going to use my white gesso again and my finger and just smudge some white gesso over that to prep it. I'm letting that dry. We're going to come back in with the uh, glitter paper layer here. I'm going to rough up the edges a little bit, glue the photo down. So you're going to definitely see the glitter. It's just going to peek around the edges of the photo there. 
And I like the idea of layering something behind the photo like this because it helps separate it from the background and just helps it stand out a little bit more. So I wanted to incorporate more of that golden yellow color that is in the Simple Stories goodies. So I'm going to blend a couple of ink pads from previous kits. We got these in a recent kit. It was either May... I think it was May or June. It might have been last month. I can't even remember. We've been getting so many ink pads lately and awesome things and the months just keep flying. I can't keep track of what month had what product. But I'm mixing the orange and the yellow together and using my water brush to color these up. And my initial thought with this was I wanted the title to be white and I wanted a little shadow peeking around the edges underneath the white with the yellow. Kind of like that. So that's why I'm just kind of hurrying up with this yellow here. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just kind of coloring it to where it's done because you're not going to see most of it. You're just going to see the edges. But what happens is I try it the other direction and I loved it so much more. So I'm going to put the yellow on top of the white. Look at the difference. I don't know why I wanted it to be white. There's already a lot of white in the photo. The yellow it just pops. So I thought, okay, we're going to go with that. And we're going to have the white layer kind of as the shadow. I love how that turned out. And the O Girl is pretty much done. I'm not going to go back and add any more color to that because I like that it looks kind of messy and imperfect. So I've got the design pretty much down. I cut one more of the, uh, the heart outlines because I felt like I needed one right there in that spot. And this is pretty much where everything's going to go. I'm going to start to lightly glue things together here. Um, I'm going to glue the title together so you can see the white peeking around the bottom part there so it looks like a shadow. And I'm not going to glue all of it down 100% because I do want some of it to kind of pop up a little bit. So um, can't forget the dot over the eye. And then I'm going to glue these little flowers down on top of the photo there. And usually I don't overlap this many things on top of my picture but since there's so much stuff going on in the background I felt like I could successfully cover that up without even touching any part of my daughter because I don't want her head covered up I don't want her legs she's sitting in the dentist chair and she's got her legs crossed and just thought it was cute and I like the fact that you can see her big high top tennis shoe because I wanted to use those little pink uh, shoes down there at the bottom because I thought that that would be perfect so I don't want to cover up anything like that but it was kind of perfect the way the title just sort of encompassed her like the, the H covered up the person in the background and then the G kind of fit right there underneath where her leg is folded so I thought okay this is a little more than I like to overlap but it works for this one and then I had the little flowers there that are going to overlap and you know, I always have rules that I set for myself, like, okay, don't ever overlap that much on a photo. And here I go, breaking the rule. And that's the beauty of making your own pages like you want. You can break whatever rule you want. Because guess what? There are no rules. Plot twist, there are no rules. Do what you want. If you like it, do it. That's just my two cents. I decided to add some pink in. That's what I'm doing here. I don't know if this was a mistake. I think in the end it's okay. Uh, I'm using, again, more past products. This is the Art Philosophy Blush. We got three of these little squeezy watercolors a couple months ago, and I thought, you know what, we're just going to add in some pink around the edges here. I felt like I needed another color on the background. We've already got a lot of mint. The, the big title is yellow, so the, the third main color, other than black, is the yellow. I meant the pink the pink. So that's what we're doing here is adding this in. And a lot of this is just going to be covered up. So you're going to just see parts of it. I know it looks like a lot here and uh, I do dab up some of it, but it's going to be only visible in a couple spots because like right here, I'm tucking everything back in. And so it's just a little bit of pink around the edges. I'm going to come back in with the same pink and add some splatters and not quite sure which ones might show up, which ones might be covered. So I kind of just go crazy with the splatters here because I always think that I add too many splatters. And then when I bring everything back, most of them are covered up. So I'm trying to make sure I have plenty of those. Do a little dabbing up there with the paper towel roll. And 
see where we're at. Give a little test run here and see how it looks thus far. Um, I, I like gluing big things together like the hearts. I have two heart clusters now because it's a pain in the butt to come back and bring every single little piece back and forth, back and forth. So if there is something that I can glue together to, to move as one big chunk, I'm going to do that as quick as I can. So that's why I'm glad that Oh Girl is, is attached already so I can just move the picture and the title all together. So I think this is where everything's going to go. Now I'm going to add in some thread before I start to glue. And I pulled out all the main colors of thread. I decided to go with black on the left and the right, kind of where the hearts are. Because this layout is going to wind up having kind of a, a grungy feel, for me anyway. Because I'm going to wind up adding some stamping to the background, even though there's all that texture on there. And it's going to wind up having a little bit of a grungy feel. I think it's because there's just so much black on it. And I haven't made a layout with a lot of black like this in a while. So I um, wanted to continue to echo that all over the background. And that's going to come in just a few minutes. I'm using pink thread at the bottom and the top just to bring a pop of pink to those areas. And now I'm just going to glue everything down because I know that this is where everything is going to go. And I'm going to, the hearts uh, are in the background are going to be glued flat to the, the background paper, but the title and the photo are going to be popped up. And I've already added it to the photo, but I'm going to pull the cut file off here to add some little pieces of foam behind that as well, and then glue it down. Since it's attached to the photo, I wanted it to be the same height. So I'm going to have that raised up a little bit, and then that is going to go right back where it was. I kind of touched it there a little bit so my glue got smudged, but it's okay. It dries clear. I like how this is looking. We're going to keep going here. Um, I do want to use this little You Are Beautiful chipboard sticker and the Good Vibes chipboard sticker. And the shoes. I decide to layer the shoes kind of at the bottom there on top of the G, but I'm going to add those later. Here's where I come in with some crazy stamping. Not too crazy, but... I should have done this before, but I wasn't sure I wanted to do it before. So um, this is the exclusive stamp set. It's got layerable flowers, but I'm just going to use this little stamp here that's a cluster of little circle dots. And I'm just going to kind of stamp it and then stamp it a few times to kind of make it look like little random black circle smudges on the background in a few spots. And it looks, it winds up looking kind of messy down there at the bottom, but I'm going to add something over that later. I wouldn't call it a mess up. It just didn't turn out as cute as I thought it would, but I'm going to remedy that later. So no worries there. And I haven't played with this, the uh, flower stamps yet where you can stamp one solid color and then stamp a layer on top of that. I have yet to try that and I think it's going to be really cool. So I want to play around with that next. Uh, here are the cute little shoes at the bottom. Half of them are going to be on the G and the other half are, are not. So I'm going to add some foam to the side that's not so they don't sag down. They stay up at the same level. And then I'm going to add some black thread underneath that. I felt like I needed a pop of something black down there. So we're going to go with thread because I always love how thread looks in a little cluster like that. And I feel like that's the color that needs to be there. The shoes are adorable. So we're going to glue in the rest of the things here, the other chipboard pieces up at the top, and um, oh yeah, I stamped some more. This is a, a flower. It's an open flower. So um, I don't know what possessed me to keep stamping, but I did. And it's just adding more of that, like I said, grungy feel to the background. And it works okay, I think. It just gives the, the layout a little more interest, a little more texture, and just adds more detail, I think. I try to not do too much, but stamping, when you get going, it's fun. And uh, I just, I wanted to use more stamps, so. Just a little bit more to the background there. This is a little chipboard sticker from Simple Stories. It says, hey girl, 
and I wasn't sure where to put it. It winds up going at the bottom of the picture right there. And then the good vibes is going to go over to the left, kind of overlapping the hearts a little bit. Right there. And I know we have to be close to getting done. Uh, I wanted to use so many more things, but I just felt like it was getting it was getting to the point to where enough was enough. But I really wanted to use some more stickers, but I wind up not. I really started the page thinking I would use some of those black clear flower stickers for Maggie Holmes. Oh, here's me dismantling a Maggie Holmes sticker. Yep, I didn't want to use the whole big thing. I just wanted this gold glitter heart with sweet on it. So I just tore it off. And again, I fully support if uh, you see something that you like, but you don't want to use the whole thing, don't be afraid to, to, te to tear it apart or to cut it up. You know, I fully support that <laughs> because I do it all the time. I used to not. I used to be afraid of that. I used to think I have to use, it, use this exactly as it comes, and that's not the case. Um, there's a couple of clear stickers that I wanted to use. I put this one that says you shine down here at the bottom. I wind up moving that. And then this one says dream big. I'm going to put that inside the heart over here. And these look like stamps, but they're stickers. This one says sweet and I'm going to wind up moving you shine over to the left inside the pink heart. And then I'm going to put sweet underneath girl. And I, I wind up not even using any of the puffy stickers from Simple Stories that I started the layout. Look, that's one of the things that inspired me. Th those right there. I do use a heart. I take that back. I use a heart. But I was going to try to use one of the black puffy words. I was trying to use sweet. It was just too big for this particular design. and I couldn't find a place for it. So I just used this one instead. And it still says sweet, but it's clear stickers and they're all separate. So I can, you know, make them a little bit smaller. And then I found these ladybugs. So here I am adding more stuff. At this point, we don't need any more stuff. This is busy enough. There's enough stuff going on. So we're just going to add in some little ladybugs and hopefully I don't add anything more. I do add some things for the journaling because I wanted to cover up that stamping smudgy section down at the bottom. Oh yeah, I forgot about this. I used this little frame as a layer because mainly because it was kind of the reddish orange color. And if you look in the washi tape, if you look in the good vibes in that Simple Stories collection, there is a reddish orange color and I hadn't really used any of that on this page. And so I found this little frame on one of the Maggie Holmes sticker sheets and thought, you know what, I should work that into a subtle layer kind of over to the sides of the photo. So that's what I'm going to do on either side of the picture. And in the end, I think it does make a difference because it, it helps the photos separate from all of the busy stuff around it a little bit more. And it also brings in a pop of that color because I haven't really used a lot of that color. You know, I didn't use it on the background. I didn't use a thread in that color. Um, so here's what I do to kind of cover up my stamping yucky down at the bottom. I'm going to use two of these label stickers from the one of the Maggie Holmes sticker sheet and kind of layer them together and write my journaling right on those because my background's got a lot of texture on it from all the circles that I messed up on multiple times. And so I knew that my pen wouldn't write really smoothly on that anyway. So these were perfect. So I can just cover up the mess with my journaling. And I do pop that up with some thread, with some thread, what? With some adhesive foam. And you can still see some of the stamping, but mostly it's covered up. So there's always a way to fix something if you make a boo-boo. And that's the perfect spot for the journaling, actually. I feel like the rest of the areas were just already too busy for that. So we are almost finished. Last thing I'm going to do is add in some black splatters. And this is a shimmers that I have from my stash. And then I add the date. And I do add underneath the IR in girl, I do add another chipboard piece of that little orangey color. But that's it. That's the final page. I really like how this turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed the process, even though it was... <laughs> kind of stressful and annoying at times, but that's just what happens, you know? I never know until you start the page what's going to go down, but I like the end result. I love this color scheme. I really like this cut file, and there are a ton of fun cut files this month. If you haven't checked those, yet, checked those out yet, 
Um, but yeah, let me know if you have any questions. And I, I hope to see you guys in my next video. Thank you so, so much for stopping by. And the close-ups are going to just keep coming because I always take too many. But I will see you next time.